Hi, everyone. Today is March 29th. It is the Monday of Holy Week, and we have quite a week ahead of us, don't we? So our lesson for today comes from Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 9, and it is one of the servant songs that Isaiah, that the prophet Isaiah wrote, um, uh, and we as, uh, that the prophet Isaiah wrote, looking toward um, the coming Messiah and what the Messiah would have to go through. As Christians, because we believe that Jesus is that Messiah, um, for Christians, we feel like that has already been accomplished. And so an eye toward Jesus, um, that we believe that this is, um, that this is a song um, about Jesus. So hear these words. But here is my servant, the one I uphold, my chosen who brings me delight. I've put my spirit upon him and he will bring justice to the nations. He won't cry out or shout aloud or make his face public in, make his voice heard in public. He won't break a bruised reed. He won't extinguish a faint wick but he will surely bring justice. He won't be extinguished or broken until he has established justice in the land. The coastlands await his teaching. God the Lord says, the one who created the heavens, the one who stretched them out, the one who spread out the earth and its offspring, the one who gave breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you for a good reason. I will grasp your hand and guard you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations, to open blind eyes, to lead the prisoners from prison and those who sit in darkness from the dungeon. I am the Lord, and that is my name. I don't hand out my glory to others or my praise to idols. The things announced in the past, look, they have already happened, but I'm declaring new things. Before they even appear, I tell you about them. Amen. Part of the reason that we associate, before I even read the text here, part of the reason we associate um, this Isaiah passage with Jesus is because when we read in Luke 4, um, Jesus taking in his first appearance in, uh, in ministry, really, um, we read that he has taken the scroll of Isaiah and he is reading from it and he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, uh, sight, recovery of sight to the blind, release um, to the captives, etc. That's this passage. The words are a little bit different because I'm reading from the Common English Bible rather than um, the New Revised Standard Version, which a lot of us are more familiar with. So that's so I want to kind of couch it with that, that that's part of the reason why we um, attribute this image of the suffering servant to Jesus. Okay. Nicole Massey Martin points us uh, to verses two and three as she begins her devotion. And she writes, he will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. And this is what she writes. The journey to the cross 
can feel like a shrinking entryway. The ceiling gets lower with every step as the walls come in and the path narrows. The closer we get, the lower we must stoop until we find ourselves crawling on our hands and knees face to the ground in an attempt to catch a glimpse of the suffering servant. The exuberant joy of Palm Sunday already feels like a distant memory. All we can see now is the face of Jesus set firmly toward Calvary. The tensions of the Savior are now fully in play. Christ is both weak and strong, vulnerable and capable, fully human and fully divine. This dichotomy stands out not only for what Jesus will endure, but also for the type of people he has come to save. His weakness builds solidarity with the weak. His silence coincides with those who have no voice. Though he has all power, he does not abuse it. Though he has all knowledge, he does not vilify the ignorant. Christ is on a mission, and if we look closely enough for long enough, we will see that mission of the cross is justice. The cross initiates faithful justice where the last become first, the marginal become central. Unlike earthly justice, Christ's work will bring lasting equity for sinners in need of grace. This is good news for every nation. Christ has come to level the scales of life and death, good and evil, once and for all. The pathway is narrowing and we will not clearly see the fullness of the justice mission on earth. But the promise of Christ through the, through the cross is a promise of a wider vision on the other side. On the way there, we'll need to let go of the extra baggage and shed any unnecessary weight. And as we do, we just might find ourselves leaning in for a view that we've never experienced before. Amen. Well, one of the things that we talked about today was the difficulty it is for us to be able to, um, to think about justice um, without being partisan. Um, and it is hard. I admit that it's hard. Um, but what we talked about was not necessarily the systemic issues of justice, but what are those little, what are the little bags that we're carrying? Not the huge suitcase of systemic injustice, but what are the little bags that we carry? And I want to invite you to think about that as well. What are those smaller bags that are still weighing us down, that are still holding us back, that are still separating us from one another? What are those smaller bags that, um, that stop us from recognizing the full humanity of the people in front of us? of recognizing the ways in which we can contribute to bringing justice? What are the things that are stopping us from doing what's right, even when it's difficult? Some of the things that we talked about in the small group were just our own resistance to change and how hard that can be sometimes then we agree that sometimes change is really hard because we're comfortable, right? Or we know what to expect. Well, if any, if any time in our life, life has taught us not to 
count on all those things that we have always come to count on. COVID this year has taught us that, right? And this year has taught us to be adaptable. This year has taught us a new way of caring for one another. Wearing a mask, staying distanced from each other. If you feel sick, don't go out. This, this year has also taught us some new ways of being, new ways of being church, new ways of connecting. Now, who knew a year ago that we would be meeting by Zoom every single week, that not only do we meet by Zoom for worship, but we meet by Zoom for meetings and things like this. And uh, while we all want to get back together for worship at some point, and prayerfully, we will do that by Advent. I'm not, I'm not anxious to run back um, uh, just yet. We want to make sure everybody gets vaccinated. We want to make sure everybody is safe. We want to make sure the variants haven't done something weird. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm like many of you wanting to just take our time before we rush back to the building. However, however, we miss one another and we want to be together. But isn't Zoom a great way, an intermediate way of, of still coming together and still worshiping together? And it's new. It's something that we weren't used to. So while always doing things the same way can feel really comfortable, sometimes we are eager, we need to be eager to challenge ourselves and push ourselves to move into a slightly different space and see what God has in store for us there. So what are the bags that you're carrying that are blocking your view? that are stopping you from seeing the big expanse that God has in store. Think about those things and see what you might be able, how you might be able to lighten your load a little bit. I'm not saying get rid of everything all at once, but let's see how we can lighten our loads a little bit. It is a great day. And we have a long, it's going to feel like a long week. We are just on Monday. And we know that Thursday and Friday and Saturday are going to, are going to weigh on us in a different kind of way. And then on Sunday, oh, I can't wait till Sunday. So. Let us join together. Let us prayerfully go through this week together. And let us be brave enough to drop some of those bags and see what God has for us. Let's pray and then I will let you go. Christ Jesus, help us to lean in. Give us the strength to let go of anything that keeps us from a closer view. We want to see justice play out through your eyes. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow.